Good afternoon, everyone. Hasn't this been a wonderful day? It's been such a wonderful day. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of our faculty, staff, and students, let me welcome you to this historic day. And for this historic event, the next step in returning student housing to the campus of Bluefield State College. Before we begin, please let me introduce the Reverend Gary Moore, the chair of the Bluefield State College Board of Governors, who will provide the invocation. Gary. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this blessed moment. We thank you for what has led up to this particular place, point, and time in history. Thank you, O oh God, for this groundbreaking ceremony. For we realize, O oh God, you are the one who breaks up fallow ground. We ask, O oh God, that you will fill us with your spirit throughout this day, throughout this weekend. And we thank you for getting the governor here safely. We pray now, O oh God, that your will will abide with us now henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend. A little over 50 years ago, the campus of Bluefield State College boasted two dormitories that not only provided housing and the opportunity for a high quality education for students from afar, but also generated an energetic and robust campus life that enhanced and made memorable a student's overall academic experience. For reasons that we hope and pray will never descend upon our campus again, these dormitories were closed in November of 1968, leaving students stranded in the cold of winter while still facing the academic challenges of a rigorous course load. Over the past five decades, there's been efforts to reestablish on-campus housing, including President Moore's setting aside of Title III money, and President Krotzik's recognition of the importance of including student housing as a key component of the campus master plan. Today, the shifting demographics of this area make it crucial that we move and move quickly beyond mere aspirations and discussions and planning and begin to take tangible steps to make on-campus housing a reality. Earlier this week, the Campus Housing Corporation of Bluefield, the college's affiliated entity for housing construction and management, identified the architect for Heritage Village, which will be constructed where you are sitting right now. The firm has also started working on the precise details for the creation of Heritage Village. You may have already witnessed the core drilling that took place on this very location several weeks ago, and over the next few weeks you'll see the surveying that's necessary before dirt will begin to fly in October. At this, at that point, where'd River Moore go? We'd ask that you please pray for a mild winter. <laughs> Thank you very much. Our goal is to have on-campus housing available for the fall of 2020 and to continue to pursue the construction of both on-campus and off-campus housing to meet the student demand and to provide the necessary auxiliary services such as food service, lounge and recreation areas through the renovation of the student union. We admit we've been aggressive and we shall continue to do so. Ladies and gentlemen, we can no longer wait as the challenges to our ability to sustain the opportunities provided by this institution are growing rapidly. As I mentioned earlier, the last on-campus housing closed in November 1968. So we're fortunate to have with us today members of the Bluefield State College class of 1969, the last class to have access to on-campus housing for their time as students. I'd like to have those members of that class of 1969 rise right now and be recognized. We have asked a distinguished member of that class, Dr. John Vernon, to take just a few minutes to share his reflection on campus life at a time when campus housing was available. Please let us welcome Dr. Vernon. To 
all of these honorable ladies, gentlemen, assembled to witness this memorial event, good afternoon. Let me start by giving a little history lesson before embarking upon the reason this event means so much to me and future generations. I graduated from high school in 1965, exactly 100 years after the Civil War. History teaches us that it was against the law to teach slaves to read. Upon this trend of thought, I, add, I want to add that in 1939 is when the high school my father, sister, and brother graduated from was founded. My father in 1941, my sister in 1967. I bring these dates up to remind you that black people have been accused of being behind in the educational vision of our country. We have only had access to a small amount of educational processes that historically white institutions have had since the country began. Bluefield State itself was founded upon the far-sighted visionaries who knew that black people will need HBCUs because of the hatred in the country that would deny admission to traditional white institutions of higher learning. I am the first generation of Vernon family, as I am sure most graduates from HBCUs are. I had no help from my parents after the second semester. God put these institutions here to help his people to overcome the people obstacles placed to block the progress of a rising people. Upon arriving at this institution, I was told by one of my fellow Excelsior graduates that the black president was replaced by Dean Stafford. I was told he wanted me to speak for the people of Payne Hall, that's the ma ma male dormitory. I was chosen because I had a 3.8 GPA and the administration may listen to me. I talked with the acting president about A, no stools on the toilets, B, no working telephones in a dorm, C, we are not allowed to use the commons area where the television and couches are located. Dean Stafford didn't believe that we were living in such conditions and said that he would visit the next day. He came in boots and work clothes and found the conditions deplorable. He ordered immediate corrections of existing conditions and put a supervisor over the dorm who could open the commons area and oversaw the general operation conditions of Payne Hall. Dean Stafford was placed in a short time by President Hardway. The elimination of black staff members began almost immediately. Students protested because all teachers were replaced with white teachers and supervisors. Student protests were met with harder and harder restrictions. New buildings like the PE building was constructed, but students were unable to use the Olympic sized swimming pool. Mm -hmm. Dean Moore came to one of our dances, the Philly Dog was popular then. <laughs> Dean Moore said that our dances looked like sex rituals and that we had to learn the waltz and classical dances. <laughs> I am trying to show you the insensitivity of the administration to the student culture at that time. More protests filing the bombing of P.E. building. I was studying in my room on the side of the P.E. building when a student ran up and knocked on my door and told me that a bomb was in one of the buildings and all students need to assemble by the student center. I ran to the girls' dorm to get my fiance, wife now, <laughs> and sister who was already in the student union. Bomb did indeed go off, and with a terrible boom, and bricks and rocks fell everywhere. My first thought was, what could this mean? What could be accomplished by so radical an act? My answer came quickly. All dormitory students were ordered to get their possessions out of the dorms, and dorms would be closed within a few days. I had just six months before graduation. The remaining black staff helped most of us to find people in the community who would keep us. I was in the block within two months. But my sister and my fiance had at least two years left. My dream had been that since I had started the college experience for my family, my children could attend the same college that their father graduated from. The dream was never realized because of the insensitivity of both students, politics, and administration. My hope now is through the action of the present political machine and administration that the dream may yet come true for many people who attend Bluefield State College. Bluefield State was well known for its teachers all over the country. If you say you graduated from Bluefield State College, you are almost assured a job. Right now, it appears that the nursing program is an attraction 
for this institution. Hopefully, the teaching program as well as the nursing program would be attraction for Bluefield State. And with the dorms, sports programs will return and become popular and attract more students to attend BSC. In conclusion, as a former student and a president of Roanoke Alumni Association, I pledge myself to do as much as I can to help this institution to regain its ability to attract all students from all backgrounds. Hopefully to get sports, teaching programs, and programs of value included so that more students will come here. For the people who doubt it, this day would ever come. I want to give them one of my favorite poems. Now somebody said it cannot be done, but he with a chuckle replied that maybe it could, but he would be one who wouldn't say so till he tried it. So he buckled right in with a bit of a grip. If he doubted he hit it, he started to sing as he tapped the thing that could not be done, and he did it. Now somebody said, you'll never do that. At least nobody ever done it. But he took off his coat, and he took off his hat, and before you knew it, he begun it. With a lift of a chin and a bit of a grin, without any doubt it or quit it, he started to sing as he tackled the thing that could not be done, and he did it. Now there are thousands who say it cannot be done. There are thousands who have prophesied failure. There are, proud, there are thousands who can tell you one by one of the troubles that wait to a second. But just buckle in with a bit of a grin. Just take off your coat and go to it. Just start to sing as you tackle the thing that cannot be done, and you'll do it. May God bless Bluefield State. Thank you, Dr. Vernon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is truly a distinct honor for me to introduce to you a man that before 2016 was probably best known as the man who saved the Greenbrier and restored it as one, if not the, crown jewel in the state of West Virginia. Now he's the guy that's better known as the person who finally decided to fix our roads, and he's doing something about it. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to welcome to the campus of Bluefield State College for the second time in just a few months, the 36th governor of the state of West Virginia, Governor Jim Justice. Okay. I'm coming out here with you. <laughs> I'm staying in shape. I took the Little League over 5,000 years ago. And they'd sit there, and the sun would just be beating down on them. And I would say to them just this. I would say, you know, that sun's hot, and that bleacher's hard. But there'll be a day in your life that you'd give anything in the world to be black on that bleacher back in the sun. And I'm going to tell you this day right here, Day that's been needed forever and ever and ever. But I didn't want to be speaking in the shade. I wanted to be with you. You see, at the end of the day, I say it all the time, but I don't want a thing being governor for me. There's many dignitaries here from the Senate and the House. God bless you in every way for being here and all that you do. I'm sure there's many dignitaries here from the standpoint of the city. There's coaches that are here. Coach Large, Coach Parham just stood up just a second ago. You know, absolutely there's 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 superstars all amongst the midst. But at the end of the day, 
this facility couldn't quite get off the ground. Now, the people that are the stars are the ones that came to me, came to us. You see, at the end of the day, I've just said, I don't want a thing, but what I want is goodness for you. And I mean that when I say it. You see, I don't have time to blow smoke up anybody's hind end. I don't do that. All I do is speak the truth. This institution without housing at the institution is handicapped. Amen. That's all there is to it. Now, I know, because when I was in the dorm at Marshall University and at Tennessee, while I was in the dorm, those were the greatest times of my life. That's right. I mean, you made so many friends. You did so much stuff to, to advance your education. And there was things that I did that didn't advance my education. I've got to tell you this really quickly. But I lived in South Hall, Marshall. And the dorm was a long building. Halfway down the hallway, there was a fire door there. And on the other side of the fire door was the girls. Now, the girls had their own elevator. We had our own elevator. That's the way, it, you know, just the way it was. But on the third week that I was in school, I was walking up the steps. And when I was walking up the steps, laying right on the steps, was a key with a shoestring tied to it. And I thought, well, you know, I'll just take it down to Lost and Found. And I laid it on my dresser. And then two days later, I remembered, I've got to take that to Lost and Found. And so as a kid would do, just before I took it, I just put it in my door and just, it, it opened my door. And I said, well, that's my key. I mean, I had the same kind of shoe strength. And then I put my key in the door and it opened my door. And I said, huh. And I went right across the hall to my buddy who wasn't in his door, in room, and choo -choo, it opened his door. So I went and destroyed his whole room. And then when he came back, he couldn't understand what happened to his room. And I kept doing it day after day after day. But, uh, you know, let me tell you, the dorm life is so essential. This will make this institution grow. Yes. You've waited too long. Yes. And that's all there's to it. You know, you know, when I came into office, there were people that were working on the Coalfield Expressway or the King Cole Highway. And literally, this was hard for me to imagine. 28 years, now going on 30 years. 30 years of work on something that just never, ever has materialized. You see, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that at all. Just, uh, just this week, you know, we did stuff at Wheeling University that's really good stuff. So today, I very, very proudly want to tell you just this. After being badgered to totally to death by Steve Sarver, your president, and many others, <laughs> The state is going to commit $500,000 to start this project. Another $500,000 in July of 2020 and everything. And that in itself is going to kickstart matching dollars that you have. And all of a sudden now, here we go. Here we go. Right. This facility will have people in it very, very, very soon. And here we go at Bluefield State. And absolutely, you've waited too long. 50 years is ridiculous. There was a wonderful lady who just came up and spoke to me and shook my hand and said that, that I think you said you attended here in, in 19... Graduated in 1951. Must have been like two. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> you talk gifted. I mean, I, but I'll tell you, you waited too long. The Coalfield Expressway, King Kong Hall Highway, and that bridge to nowhere, and all this—you've waited too long. You're too blooming good. 
So I'm so proud to be able to be here. It's a great, great, great day. I know you're hot. I know that bench is hard. This will be a day. This will be a day you'll remember forever. God bless all of you in every way. I hope you don't think less of me for standing under here while you're here. <laughs> Before I provide just a few uh, closing remarks and and we we go on with the with the ceremony, uh, I just have a couple of things I want to I want to say. Uh, I want to introduce first of all some of the, the members of our board of governors that's here. Uh, Charlie Coles over here, Mike Hastings, uh, Ronnie Hypes, and Gary Moore, who you met like nine times today, and uh, and oh, and also, <laughs> I'd also like to thank Bonnie Copenhaver, the president of. Uh, uh, stand up, Bonnie. She's the president of New River Community College, Community Technical College, and Kendra Bodges, who's the president of Concord University, for coming out and joining us today. There's four other people that I want to recognize, and I know when I do this, I'm probably going to be remiss. But from it was, I've been I've been told there's four people that have been been putting up with this fight for years and years and years and years, and I want them to stand up because I want them to be recognized because hopefully we're really really close to their dreams coming true. Uh, Mildred Washington, yeah. 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 Joe Lewis, where's Joe Lewis? Carl Boyd, Dolores Taylor, now there's so many more of you that have been engaged in this, but these are four who, who, who I was told basically have been, have been really, really involved in, oh, okay, oh, I didn't know they were here, okay, thank <laughs> you. Two other people I need to recognize, because I, I, I I, I see Deidre every day. Is Deidre guiding? Where's Deidre? Right. There you are. Stand up, Deidre. Stand up. Yay. And Carol Cofer. And I'm sorry, Carol, you're just too new for me. <laughs> Thank you. A couple of things I want to mention real quick, and you've heard me say it before. There's a reception at the President's Home from 6 to 8. Even if you got a few minutes, just stop by. There'll be plenty of food, and it'll be a great time to just sit and talk about what a wonderful historic day this has been. You know, tomorrow we've got the big blue bash, which is going to happen right where you're sitting. It's a, it's where we're giving away, we're giving away cash every half an hour, and we're giving away a car. The car has just been delivered over there from Bill Call Auto Mall. Uh, we're giving away a car to uh, to a student, uh, so you can't win it, but you can come and watch the happy student <laughs> does. <laughs> Governor Justice, on behalf of the entire campus community, let me offer our deepest appreciation for not only your willingness to listen and understand the wonderful story that is Bluefield State College, but to recognize the important role that this institution plays and can play in revitalizing the economic fortunes of this region. I think I speak for many when I say that you're the first governor in recent memory to not only show his understanding of this institution, but offer and provide the support necessary for the continuation of our vital mission. For your support, we'll be forever grateful. So thank you, Governor Justice. We're simply overwhelmed. One final word. One of my favorite sayings from Dr. King is that we may have all come on different ships, but we're all in the same boat now. Like all families, the Bluefield State family has had its share of differences based upon different perspectives, perhaps coming from different walks of life. But the time has come when we're all in the same boat, and we all want to get to the same place, a place where Bluefield State College is not just surviving, but thriving as a place that changes lives. Yes. I'm sure the symbolism of rededicating the library and conducting this groundbreaking on the same day has not escaped the observation of those who know our story and many of those who have held this institution so close to their hearts for so many years. In a few minutes, as we turn the soil to symbolically begin the construction of Heritage Village, a name that pays homage to our rich and inspiring past. May we also turn the page to the next chapter in the Bluefield State College story, a chapter that honors the past, especially the uniqueness of being an historically black college, but also tells of a future of hope, 
unity, and prosperity. We're all in the same boat. So let us pledge today to pour our oars together with great strength and determination, all headed in the same direction. Because if we do, we, so that we may soon title that next chapter, Bluefield State University. Amen. Thank you all for coming. Chair of our foundation, John Reinhardt. Is John here? Want him to come on over? Uh, Dolores Taylor, we want you to come up. And Dr. Jim Schaefer, who's the head of our, uh, who's the head of our housing corporation. Let's go right over here. Okay, let me 